shooting sticks have actually come a long way in the last decade or so. Standard bipods were commonplace 100 years before the uh, tripod shooting sticks became the industry standard. Virtually every hunting guide in the world put their clients on tripod shooting sticks like these red-legged devils right here. Then Primo's took it a step further with the Jim Shockey trigger sticks. And, you know, these third generation trigger sticks are probably the pinnacle of a true uh, tripod hunting stick design. But things progressed further and hunters started attaching field pods and saddle attachments to tripod systems. And the Europeans went a totally different direction with their quad shooting stick systems. In this video, I'll test all of these different shooting aid designs for precision and ease of use in the field and practicality in real hunting situation. So stay tuned as I perform the most comprehensive shooting stick design comparison ever seen on YouTube. There's a whole lot of tripod shooting sticks on the market right now. And, you know, quite honestly, it's probably the most popular design as a shooting aid for hunters worldwide. But these are my Primos Jim Shockey Generation 3 trigger sticks. I've been using the Primos trigger sticks for over 10 years now, and I'll admit these are the most popular shooting aids on the market right now. And for a while, almost every guide in North America was carrying these sticks for their clients. These are light enough to carry around and uh, use as a walking stick while you're hiking. And uh, this is probably the quickest and most functional shooting stick in this test. These heads can also be quickly removed and changed out and they hold anything from cameras to spotting scopes to field pods, which makes it really convenient. These trigger sticks can basically be deployed in a second by pulling the trigger on the trigger sticks. <laughs> And uh, the head on these also freely rotates so you can easily track a moving target. But uh, what I like about these the best is probably that uh, I can go from standing to kneeling to sitting in a second without even really taking my eyes off the target. Just the quick adjustability of these sticks is simply amazing. But this quick deployment time and ease of use does come at a price. And that price is that there's no rear support to this system. So it's gonna be the most imprecise system out of all the sticks used in this test. And the Jim Ch Shockey uh, Generation 3 trigger sticks weighs three pounds, one ounce. Three pounds, one ounce, so that's pretty light. A while back, the hunting industry began searching for ways to support the rear of the rifle when it was on a tripod. These types of rests are now generically known as field pods after the original Caldwell design. But uh, they're made by many different companies now and most uh, shooting stick companies have uh, field pod attachments for their tripods now. Um, this design does make it slower to get a shot off and it's less handy to carry in the field, but that was the price you had to pay for a little bit more accuracy off the sticks. Because it supports the front and the rear of the rifle, accuracy is no longer dependent on how stable the shooting hand is while holding the rifle. You know, this adds a level of stability and trigger control to the equation that normal shooting sticks just aren't capable of. But to an experienced rifleman with an accurate rifle, how much better do these really shoot? You know, and is it worth the extra hassle to carry around and set up? We'll answer that later on in the video. And the tripod with the field pod together, that's four pounds, two ounces, four pounds, two ounces. Saddle mounts started with an underground following in the hog and predator hunting circles. They basically needed a portable system 
for making accurate shots while standing with heavy varmint rifles with night vision optics attached. The hog saddle was a real game changer for this type of hunting, but the systems were extremely expensive and consisted of a heavy duty camera tripod, a heavy duty uh, swivel ball, and a heavy duty saddle. But uh, soon, the PRS shooters started embracing the saddle mount for competitions and these shooting aids became mainstream. Then, a couple of years ago, BOG really changed things when they came out with their own affordable saddle mount system called the Death Grip. And these are actually very beefy and high quality products for the price. You know, it lacks the swivel ball that more expensive systems have, but it really gets the job done. You know, as you can see, it supports a rifle really good. This will actually support a very heavy rifle without issues. You know, and you can adjust tension everywhere to make things really stable. As you can see, you know, it, it moves on uh, four axis. So it's really easy to, uh, to track prey out in the field. So these systems come with either aluminum or carbon fiber tripods on them. But in my opinion, it doesn't really matter because they're all heavy. They're all really heavy for tripods. If you need to walk over a mile, I'd say that these are almost unusable because they weigh more than a rifle and are a real pain in the ass to carry. But having said that, many guides are starting to lug these around for clients now because they feel that the accuracy advantage is worth carrying the extra weight. Just be mindful that BOG also makes a little lightweight head attachment that you can attach to camera tripods. And I don't recommend that. That's actually a piece of shit. But uh, the BOG death grip system as a whole system, the, the saddle mount you get and the tripod you get, is actually a high quality affordable piece. And this BOG death grip that weighs 8 pounds 11 ounces. 8 pounds 11 ounces. So. That's about the typical weight of your average hunting rifle being used out right, right now. So carrying this death grip around is like uh, carrying another rifle with you. It's that heavy. In the last few years, Europeans have been slowly transitioning away from bipods and tripod shooting sticks and have fallen in love with quad sticks. Truth be told, quad sticks are starting to grow on me too. These are really light, probably the lightest sticks of the bunch, and they can easily be used as walking sticks. Actually, they're very convenient to be used as walking sticks. You know, these could be a little bit tricky to deploy at first, but I find them to be very stable. Basically, you just plant one end down, plant the other end down, let go of the stick, Place it in, and you're ready for a shot. It's as easy as that. Um, most of these sticks, let me deploy it again for you. Most of these sticks also have a string attached to the back of it. So you could put it on the ground and slip your foot into it. So you could keep the rifle tight to your shoulder. But in my opinion, those strings constantly get in the way. They uh, take too long to get into and they prevent movement. So I do what most people do and I take the strings off of these things. Quad sticks don't have that instant range of motion that you get with uh, most tripod mounted heads that swivel. But you can learn to adapt to using these by either walking the legs or by sliding the forend on the front rest. You can see this forend has a flat on it and you can actually slide the rifle back and forth and get some degree of tracking out of it. But uh, in the end, these do take some practice to master, but once you get it down, it's not really hard at all. And the quad sticks weigh two pounds, two ounces. Two pounds, almost three ounces. So this is by far the lightest option for shooting sticks for hunting. And it's, uh, it's also not the least stable. So that's actually a, a pretty good attribute to have that kind of stability in such a light package.
I didn't intend for this video to be an instructional video on how to use shooting sticks. Rather, I wanted this video to focus on what shooting sticks are capable of in the hands of an experienced shooter like me. <laughs> Have you noticed that videos on shooting sticks never show the groups that they shoot? Have you noticed that? There's a reason for this, and that reason is that the groups usually aren't very good. So in this video, I'm going to give you actual groups, complete with, with footage of me shooting, and a separate camera downrange at the target 100 yards away, so I can show you what you can expect with these different shooting platforms. The ugly truth about shooting sticks is that none of them are an absolutely stable platform to shoot off of. So before getting too excited about a new set of shooting sticks, you should probably lower your expectations a little bit. Shooting sticks will never get you anywhere near bench rest or prone accuracy. Their purpose is to help you shoot better than you'd shoot offhand. And because shooting sticks aren't an absolutely stable platform, there's going to be movement. And, but this movement isn't nearly as bad as shooting offhand, but it's still there and has to be dealt with. Please watch my video on offhand shooting on my channel, where I'll cover techniques for controlled movement while shooting offhand, because you still need to use those techniques with shooting sticks. This is especially true while you're standing with sticks. Whether you use that J technique or the popular technique of moving your rifle up and breaking the trigger as it comes across the target, you're going to have to create some type of controlled movement when you break your shot. This also means that your trigger pull might be more of a shotgun style trigger pull than your classic slow surprise break. You know, that, that, so, that slow surprise break trigger pull you're used to that you learned in shooting class. Um, the type of trigger control you're gonna have to use usually with shooting sticks is what's referred to as interrupted trigger control. Shooting accuracy off of sticks takes a lot of practice actually. Hell, you know, I'm still trying to figure out those European quad sticks right now, so before getting your expectations too high with shooting sticks, it's best by it's best for you to consider shooting sticks as a compromise because that's basically what it is. <laughs> you know, that way you won't get frustrated when you actually go out and you shoot your first groups because they won't be very good. But at least you'll discover your maximum ethical hunting distance off the sticks and you need to know that before you start shooting at live animals. For this shooting stick comparison, I decided to use an accurate rifle with extremely precise loads. And I wanted to use a rifle that was actually kind of light enough to hunt with, but was heavy enough to test the durability and stability of some of these shooting sticks designs because with a lot of shooting sticks rifle weight actually works against you a little bit. This rifle right here was built on a stiller action with a Brooks barrel. I bedded it into this manor stock and added a real hunting scope to it. This is a Leupold VX6. Um, people backpacking with lightweight rifles you know really aren't going to use any of the shooting sticks we're going to review in this video. I doubt people are going to take these backpacking with them. Um, so I opted to test these sticks out with a heavier gun. This rifle is just over 11 pounds, so it should be heavy enough to test the grip on the saddle mounts and light enough to really test the accuracy potential of the shooting aids that I'm testing in this video. So let's get out to the desert and start shooting some targets. I'm out here on a beautiful piece of BLM land out in the desert. And today I'm going to be shooting the 127 grain Barnes LRX. And uh, we'll see how it do. This is usually a very, very accurate load. So let's get down prone on the ground and do some shooting.
So this is my control group right here. And this is a five shot group right here. That is a five shot group and you'll see it on camera. I had a, uh, a little video camera downrange recording it. So this is a hundred yards from prone off an Atlas bipod with a 127 grain LRX. And I'll tell you what, the older I get, the more I hate shooting prone. Man, my, uh, my neck just doesn't want to bend that way anymore. So I'm actually starting to hate prone now, but, uh, you know, this, uh, this load with this rifle right here is capable of getting down into the high teens and it usually shoots in the low to mid twos. So this group's a little bit bigger than that, maybe, uh, in the threes for a five shot group, but, uh, not bad considering I was prone off a bipod out here on a windy day in the desert with uh, my neck all kinked up in a position it doesn't like being in anymore. So let's see how these rests do. Because I started this uh, range session out here in the desert, shooting prone off a bipod as a control group, I figured I'd better shoot a control group on the other end of the spectrum. So I'm going to go shoot a three-shot group now, totally offhand, see how well I do. That way we can judge how effective these shooting platforms were between shooting uh, in prone or off the bench and then shooting offhand at the same distance. So this was the uh, obviously the best group of the day right here. This was the control group. Basically shot it prone from an Atlas bipod. And you could see that this group right here. I mean that's down in the threes. 
Like I said, that's prone off of a bipod. And in my old age, I hate prone. It really kinks my neck up. But uh, if I was shooting off my bald eagle rest off a uh, concrete bench, I, that group would have probably been a lot better than that. But that's not a bad group. I mean, from prone on a bipod with that rifle and that load, that's kind of what I was expecting. And also, uh, I was kind of expecting this. This is the worst group of the day. It's also a control group. And this is offhand standing. And uh, that's a... <laughs> I mean, if the old saying, pie plate accuracy, and this is... This would be considered pie plate accuracy. And, uh, you know, that's a... It's about a four-inch group right there. Just over four inches. So... That's not great, but uh, honestly, it's going to kill most animals if I take a, uh, a shot into the vitals. It's going to kill most animals. Then uh, out of the uh, basic uh, shooting rest test here, I think the saddle won. That uh, bog pod death grip that I was shooting off of in that. And I mean, that's honestly, that's a sub-MOA group. Just barely. But I mean, you're looking at shooting about a one-inch group right there. So that's not bad right there for the saddle. Just wish that thing wasn't so heavy and cumbersome to carry all over the place. And then uh, next in line for accuracy was probably the quad sticks. You can see that group. 1.4 inches. I mean, basically looking at just under an inch and a half. That's not too bad. I mean, I'll take that. What's weird, though, is it uh, the group shot over here. And you could see, you know, this is this is where my point of impact should be. And you could see, you know, when I shot from the saddle, it was basically in that same general area right there. But for some odd reason, this shot far to the right. Maybe it was the way... I'll have to go back and look at the footage, but maybe it was the way I was holding the sticks or the rifle. But if I'm going to continue to use these, I need to correct that. But uh, that's not a bad group. It's just in a, in a weird place, so I must be holding it wrong. Like I said, uh, I'm new to these quad sticks. I'm not very experienced at them, but uh, I'm happy with that group in general. I mean, uh, that's, that's totally acceptable to me. Then uh, over here, next in line... The old Jim Shockey Generation 2 Primo's Trigger Stick. And I've shot off these things for years and years all over the place. And that's also not too bad right there for shooting off of trigger sticks. I mean, that's uh, that group's under two inches. So, I mean, it's uh, you're going to shoot over twice as good as you would prone. I mean, uh, as you would offhand standing. So using those trigger sticks is way better than shooting offhand standing. And out of all these sticks, out of all these shooting aids, this is probably the uh, the quickest to get into. But uh, that's not too bad. And then uh, the field pod over here, which I'll admit was kind of weird to shoot out of. And also you're looking at uh, just under a two-inch group on that. And uh, that was just really weird to shoot off. I really don't like setting it up and getting into that platform, really. I mean, uh, to tell you the truth, putting it in a damn saddle, I think, is quicker than getting in that field pod. So I'd say, even though it didn't group bad, I mean, that's a that's a dead animal right there. That's not bad. Um, out of all of these, I probably like that one, the field pod, the least out of all of them. But uh, there's the groups. Just to show you again, that's... Uh, a five shot control group prone. That's a three shot group right there. Offhand standing. Out of the saddle. Off the quad sticks. Off the trigger sticks. And off the field pod. So that's how it uh, panned out. Not too bad. They're all dead animals, even the offhand shot.
as you saw in this review of modern shooting sticks for hunting, things have really changed in the last uh, decade or so. Some systems, like the field pod and the saddle mounts right here, are very specialized and not really ideal for a lot of hunting situations, mainly because of their size, weight, and profile. But other systems, like uh, the trigger sticks or the quad sticks, are very versatile across a broad spectrum of hunting situations. But every system in this video had its pluses and minuses. And I firmly believe that no perfect shooting aid exists for the hunter at this time. But after doing this video, I'd say that I found the quad sticks to be the, the most useful for my hunting style. You know, they're lightweight and they're the handiest of all the shooting systems tested in this video. You know, you can see they also come apart and fold down pretty compact too. So you could pack these things in a suitcase for a trip or your rifle case. But uh, these were also, you know, more accurate than your standard tripod shooting sticks out in the field, which is also a big bonus. I plan to use these quad sticks uh, a lot in 2022 for the hunting season. And I might even take these to Africa with me. Links to all of these shooting sticks used in this video are in the description below for you. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you found this video worthy of your subscription, and I hope you did. You can reach me with any questions or comments at DesertDogOutdoors at gmail.com. Well, thank you for watching, and as always, good hunting.